I've been watching so much Hell's Kitchen, which is amazing. It's awesome. Ian is such a foodie, it's kind of, it's kind of cute. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Food is awesome. Food is awesome. I know like two people who don't like food. And they're so weird. And, and we can't be friends with them. It's like you're not human, there's something wrong. So this is a Spice and Wolf panel, I guess? Bacchino, Bacchino. Bacchino? Are you Bacchino? Italian? Italian? That's how you panel is. Yeah, what, what panel would you like it to be? Calm down. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle an Italia panel no. this early. No, that's, that's after oh, at least Italian. 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> after the bar is closed. That's when you should have an Italia panel. <laughs> Sounds like babbles, but... <laughs> or like our characters in that show. What are we doing? What's happening? What, what are you doing? Black Butler panel. I know it's Black Butler. I waited for you, Tatum. Hi, I'm Dave Michael Tatum. I play Blue Mountain. Oh, yes, he hates it so much. What? I'm Brina Valencia and I play Ciel. I'm Ian Sinclair. I directed it and I'm barred. Q&A, how you yeah. gonna do this? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, should they start like we did it in, in where were we when we did the book? Ah, yes. And I was yeah. like, let's just get this out of the way now. Sebastian will put it over to all of you. Uh, so you don't have to ask me individually, so let me just get this out of the way. Okay. These are the like FAQs of Black Butler. Yeah, yeah. Just so like, okay, so so there's like, um, Sebastian's like holding a hand, you have to picture this, and he goes, yeah, calm down. It's not legally binding. <laughs> um, would you make me the happiest butler on earth and marry me? There you go. Right? Right, okay. So don't ask me to marry you. That was just for you. All of you. Complicated marriage. Uh, so, so, okay, now the lines, what was it, the three lines or the two lines or whatever that I always get asked? Hell of a butler. Yes. Yeah. Well, after all, I'm simply one hell of a butler. And... Master, what's a little butler would I be? <laughs> That's, yes, my lord. <laughs> okay, now we can get this underway. <laughs> oh yeah, no. <laughs> so he did this at, at another con. He was like, um, I'm not gonna put it. I'm not going to pick up anybody up. Love you, but I'm not going to. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to put on anyone's shoes. And, yes. uh, I'm not going to tie shoes. I'm not going to straighten cravats. I'm not going to do anything that requires me getting up. Because unlike Sebastian, I'm lazy as hell. <laughs> and in your defense, you, do, you have done that at so many cons I was going to say, any, yeah. any Black Butler panel that I've done with you, the whole panel consists of all I have to do is order him to do things, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> kind of evil, and it's me running around going, Okay, next question. You need to choose your side, okay? Go down. <laughs> and then we get to get on Twitter. I know, I know. Sweet <laughs> All right, so uh, this is a Q and A. We cannot give A if you do not give Q. So ask your stupid question. <laughs> you uh, I had to pick. I had to pick. It's your day, princess. <laughs> I want to like you so much. <laughs> Whatever. I, try, I, I know, try. it's just that you love me so I much. I see you in the front row, my dear. You, you have a question you, you seem to be very excited about. <laughs> um, what, did you feel, what did you think about the first time you saw the nun scene? Oh god! I well, it was kind of a surprise because it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, 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 <laughs> someone's not a very good nun. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest, I mean, I've told this many times, but it's I guess it bears repeating. Um, this is one of my favorite moments of recording on the show. Was Ian was directing me, and and this line was coming up, and. 
and he showed me the line and this animation and the and the the, the, the nun was already recorded and it was I'm like sitting there going, Wow, this is okay. And so we did a pass on the line that he says in the middle of, of you know. And uh, Ian was like, Ah, oh, this is good. It's good. Reasonable take. Decent. But it's missing something. It's missing movement. <laughs> and I said, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> movement. He says, what? Because I sort of do the voice the whole day. When we're in the character, it's just easy to do and it's fun. So Ian's like, yeah, no, it needs... You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, I'm going to need you to uh, dirty dance with the microphone. <laughs> I need to hear that in your voice. Uh, and I'm like... All right, let's do this. I'm excited to be hard work. So I grabbed on. It's a very small booth. It's a whisper room, uh, what they call, which is like a you know, slightly larger than a phone booth. Uh, it doesn't fit someone of my dimensions very comfortably. So, uh, and on mic, you know, I'm here and I've got the monitor and the script in front of me and the microphone stand and there's a little door here and there's a little window right about here. And you look out the window off mic. I can see Ian and Kevin Leisure, the, the engineer, sitting at their control panel, and that's where they should be, and I should be on mic, right? Bear that in mind. So I come in for the second take, and I am moving. <laughs> and it doesn't. How are you moving? I. <laughs> But Ian has to be the microphone stand. So that done, you know, we're done, and the first thing I hear is Ian laughing his head off, but not on mic in my cans, but like off and off. Oh, look, and his face is right here, watching the entire time. I'm like, oh my god, you actually did it, you perverted son of a And I'm like, hey, man! And that doesn't it sound the, awesome? That is the take that we kept. Joy. Thank you for that question. That's a hell of a way to stop. How, 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 and to cover course, it seems. I'm kind of frightened where we go from here. Thank you. I don't ever have to do anything on Black Bottom oh, panels. Oh, awesome. oh. Somebody make her do something. It's not as fun. You're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, pretty. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cosplay as any other character in Black Butler besides your own character, what would it be? We could cosplay any other character in Black Butler besides the one we played. Who would it be? Because it could work. Grell. Madam Red. Madam Red. Madam Red. Bear Fail. I believe so. I, I like his outfit just a bit more than I like Claude's. Claude's is a bit more. Oh, Claude's a punk. <laughs> <laughs> he's a bit more shiny. He's more, more delightful. Button. More shiny. Butler. That's the Butler. technical term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buttle, subtle bling. I learned that in costume history. <laughs> Bo Brummel and shinies. The internet, yeah. Um, yeah internet. Okay, next is with the fan. Do you remember the cane? The what? The cane? Yes! What happened to the cane? I still have the cane. Oh, you do. I don't know what you're talking about. Ian used to beat me. <laughs> and that's why I got a character. Are you chewing gum? I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, no, we had it. When did the cane come into it? Because it wasn't there at the beginning. Uh, okay, that's why I thought. It was season two, and. Um, I don't know, with Sebastian, the, the voices, uh, the question was like, because the thing is, when I did France, excuse me, when I voiced France. <laughs> 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 yeah. What a distinction. 
Um, I lost the, I was, I was uh, doing Seba voicing Sebastian at the same time. And I had to jump from one group to the other in the same day and found that I could no longer do the 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 the, the, ha -ha -ha, the French accent. Because it like French and English British were like, no, you cannot be in the same head because they hate each other. And so there was a blue Snuggie on the floor in the Hatalia book that day, and I just decided I'm gonna put this on. I'm getting like a Frosty the Snowman magic top hat right, from this thing. And I put it on and boom, magically you're like, oh the old accent. Ha -ha -ha -ha. Uh, but with Black Butler, I never had that problem because I'm, I'm never very far from a British accent. Is Brina okay? Yeah, actually, anytime when I, 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 I cast you in your first lead, My right? My first lead? Yeah, in Black Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers. We've done a lot of shows with the word black in it. It gets confusing. And blood. Yeah. Blood bees. Yeah. So anyway, my most common direction that I would have to give Tatum would be less British because he just naturally always sounds British because he's so pompa. <laughs> uh, but no, actually, I think it's kind of a cool story. Tell, tell, tell him why you always sound British. Oh, I always sound British um, because I'm a refugee? No. Um, <laughs> from, from the UK. Uh, yes. Um, um, no, I was, uh, when I was very little, um, when I was young, I didn't speak for a very long time because I had a stutter. Very, very, very bad stutter. Um, so I didn't speak uh, at all. Uh, I've been making up for lost time ever since. Uh, but uh, because of that, I had a speech therapist for five years. She was this tiny little woman. Her name was Mrs. Britt. I'm not kidding you. Um, and she was British, very British. And she was one of those impossible, like, thousand-year-old women with this iron gray bun of hair that accounted for like a full foot of her height. And she had the little glasses with the chain, she had this little tin of candy, so you put on your tongue if you did the thing right or whatever, she put wrong, you about the whole thing. And so she was always speaking like this, always very, very proper, and it was fantastic. And so I kind of learned to talk from a British lady. And so that is how I'm usually very, very British. I was, um, that voice gets me into trouble. I was here last year and the con was just ending was over, in fact, and I was here for another day, just for the hell of it, and I wasn't ready. Like, the hotel had gone back to that horrible place we call, uh, normal. <laughs> and I was sad. I was like, I'm still in con mode. I don't want it to be over. So I, you know, being an actor and damaged and needing attention, I decided to just do the Sebastian voice all afternoon. And I went to, like, the concierge desk to ask for something, and I'm like, hello, how are you? And the woman was like, ah, ah, no! No! What is that coming out of your mouth? Stop it. <laughs> and I just played along with it, and I was like, oh, really? I'm sorry, is it the accent? Is it hard to understand? I sound, I, it throws some people off. No, 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 Deborah, 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 come here, come here, Deborah, Deborah, come here, Deborah, come over. Say something. <laughs> Hello, Deborah, how are you this fine afternoon? And she's like, ah, uh -uh, no! <laughs> no! If you were my boyfriend and you talked like that to anybody else, we would have problems! <laughs> So that's, that's all I have to do to get in character, is to be like, oh, yes, I'm a five in loose clothes and low light. With this accent, poof, instant ten. <laughs> What'd you do, Brandon? Oh, to get in character? No. Uh, this is not a fun story. It's super nerdy. Um, I employed the Michael Chekhov technique, which... Um, <laughs> uh, with Michael Chekhov, you, uh, like, one of the... Parts of it. It's very, very, yeah, you know, totally. <laughs> um, it's very physical, and you find a center for your character. You find out where in the body the center is, and then you give it a texture and a color, and like you know, you sort of create this imaginary thing that is your center. And so I would just picture my center um, whenever I would. Get into what did it, what did your center look like? What was the my texture? center was. <laughs> Come on. Uh, okay, my center was a black, bleeding, pussy heart. Um, Hot. That was... <laughs> uh, the inside was bright red, and then it was covered in sort of a, like, protective... So, kind of a protective barrier, but the barrier was very thin. Like, you could... If you knew how to hit it right, it would crack. Um, that's that. <laughs> it's very abstract. That's really cool, though. I like that. I, ooh, that's neat. 
Yeah, I, I did that for Ciel, and I did that for Juliet and Romeo and Juliet, oh, and I did that for Tamama. <laughs> <laughs> Tamama has a black pussy heart. Well, no, each one of them is different. Tamama's was like a like a purple, rubbery sort of like like misshapen thing, and his like the other centers were like directly in the center of my chest, and the Tamama's was like on my shoulder, like so he's a little bit. Off. <laughs> kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love that. So nerdy. What about you? I acted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I um, my British dialect. I, I grew up uh, having a friend named Daniel, who um, <clears throat> he's, he's actually got a very high one, and he's from Swindon, right outside. You know, he's um, oh. yeah, no, no, he's from. He's, he's, he describes it as just a, a crap little town. It's got a motor roller plant. That's all they got there. And, he's, oh, he's sort of thing. and so, so he, um, I grew up knowing him, and he's a good guy. And so I used to, you know, go to England and try to like talk like this to his family, and they would look at me funny, and you know, all right, that's his boy. And um, Bard actually, I, it was like it was after we got after we finished the first season, and I was reviewing some of it. I realized that Bard, a lot of it, is Sergeant Price from Call of Duty, which I was playing at the time. <laughs> and I didn't know that, but I was like, oh, yeah, so go over there, I'll get to the side and shoot the guy and all that. And so I was like, oh, that's where he's from, okay. <laughs> I don't know where most of my voices come from, they just kind of have. You forgot the shake weight. You had the, we had the shake weight. Do you remember the shake weight? I have pictures of Eric Vale, like, crouched in the corner, just angrily shaking. <laughs> I got my sister. Okay, I got my sister a shake weight for Christmas because I thought that was funny. She had a new place and you know a new house and be like, hey, have your friends over. There's this thing called a shake weight. I can do it. And you'll laugh at them. It'll be hilarious. And she cried. <laughs> she thought I was like making fun of her or something. So she's like, here, just, no. And I felt really bad. And I got her another present. And then she just left the shake weight when she went back to New York. And so I brought it and I left it in the booth. And all these voice actors were just coming up. <laughs> I chipped a tooth. I was happy with that. He, he shook it so hard. There's a little end cap. And he just went so hard, the top and boom. And like, he hit himself in the mouth. Oh, oh, oh. Right, okay. I used to go like up to, there was one afternoon when like Todd was playing Magic the Gathering with Scott for some reason. Nerd. And they were, they were like, oh, nothing wrong with that. I'm just, you know, calling it as a nerd. <laughs> But they're out there playing, and I'm like, what? So I'd have to come out there with the shake, and we'd be like, fresh ground pepper, sir. <laughs> Which is why I got it for my sister. I think those things are hilarious. <laughs> Todd was complaining when I showed him the shake, and he said, oh, is that what these are? And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. This is amazing. It's the best invention ever. I so support this ad campaign. And he was like holding it. He's like, but it doesn't do anything for you. Like, I expect there's like a motor in it or something. And I'm like, oh, really? A motor? You're supposed to do the work, not the motor. <laughs> Like, well, that, that, oh. Go back to tapping your mana or whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, magic. Yeah, I used to play magic together. Yeah, Let's go to another question. J. Michael Tatum, you picked that question. Uh, you want to agree with the ears? Uh, can Sebastian do a gay guy voice? <laughs> 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 Are you doing <laughs> Can Sebastian do a gay guy voice? Oh, I suppose I could. I don't know. Do you have a line? You've got to come up with a line. Say a line. I like men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like men. Yes, I do. <laughs> that would not want a butler like that. That would get old really quickly. <laughs> would you like some old gray? <laughs> Go away now. I love that you have like a 
like 12 people pointing at you for that. <laughs> That was a statement, not a question, just so we're clear. We're really hitting the deep issues right now. Right? <laughs> and uh, I do, I remember, I remember the blue seal you know, quite well, so thank you. I tell her to get her butt down here. And, and the rest of her. Rainbow hair. Yes. And not necessarily technique based. His is all boiling. At least mine's roasting, you know? Roasting creates caramelization. I gotta stop. I'm just gonna stop. It's a lot more delicious than boiling. That is true. I've got, were you there? I've done panels where people are like, hey, what do you think about England's cooking? And I went, well, if we're gonna talk about the actual food of the British people over the last few centuries, and I watched everybody go, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, British food. Ooh. You know there shouldn't be such a thing. <sighs> Do you want me to launch into it? British no. food is good. It was. It's hearty. It fills you up. It's wonderful if you like breakfast three times a day. I, love <laughs> I want beans and blood sausage with my breakfast. Yeah. And blood sausage. Yeah, I like blood sausage. Really good. One time I was traveling in England and I was I was backpacking with a buddy of mine. It was my senior trip. Mm -hmm. And hey, shh. <laughs> I'm trying to have a conversation. The important black butler points. <laughs> no, I was. I, this is. I discovered English food that year, and and I was there for like most of the summer backpacking, and so we get really tired. And I never, the way to eat English food is to get exhausted, so that you don't care what you're eating. <laughs> you're so hungry, you eat so much in, like caloric intake <coughs> to support the miles you have to cover on foot that day across the moors um, that you don't care. You're like, fine, I'll take this blood sausage thing floating in mash. I don't care, whatever, just whatever. And I went somewhere and we had like, it was it was a pub and it was fine. The food was fine. Tasteful? No. But it got the job done. But I was still so hungry because I want something with flavor. Do you, flavor. Do you like a good curry? Well, yeah, but curry, I don't uh, like British food. That's not British. Yes, it is. The actual way that we think of it. It's a different, no, it's a, it's a completely different thing than what the in, Indian food, which is actually based on something called kari, which is a gravy well, thing. I know, it's kind, of, it's kind of similar to our conception of Chinese food. Here. Exactly. It's, it's not. And it it's, is it's like the national dish over there is is their late night going and getting hurt. That was my experience of a lot of British food. Yes, there was a lot of sausages and boiled stuff, but a lot of my time, and I mean, I went and did a lot of pub hopping at three in the morning curries and, you know, shawarma curry is wasn't, awesome. Curry wasn't big when I was there. Um, Were you drinking at 3 in the morning? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it wasn't popular at the time. Ah, that's like the first thing. It was the early 90s, and curry didn't hit until, like, it, you could find it in London, and you could find it in, like, you know, uh, various other places, like, you know, very metropolitan areas. But the little out of the way, like, manure thatched. Oh, uh, yeah. No, like, you're, you're right. You're right. Places, yeah. You couldn't find it. There. You've, got, you've got, like, you know. A boil this potato with yeah. some green tricks to it. Yeah. And then we them together. Put it on top of meat. <laughs> yes, nom 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 nom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a pescatarian, so when I went to England, it was like, oh, let's go to an Indian restaurant. <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's well, I mean, it's, they have good Indian food there. It's because of all their. Oh my god. I'm gonna, we were talking about food, I'll go on all day. Well, no, so, I got, so I got, no, but the thing is, I, I got a chocolate cake for dessert at this pub when I was really hungry, so I'm like, there's a chocolate cake, and this chocolate cake is just calling my name, because there it is, sitting in the little glass case with like a perfect shaft of light hitting it. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I want this cake, and then she's like, yes, you're so you want the cake, alright, that's fine, do you want cream on it? And I'm like, yes, I want cream on it. <laughs> it came out floating in a bowl of goddamn milk. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow, gross milk with like a skin on it. I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, I hate milk. The cow is actually in the bar over yeah. there. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it wasn't cow milk. I think it was otter milk. I have no idea <laughs> what the hell it was. But like, this is warm, gross with this little skin on it. I'm like, ah, oh. ah. The cake would like was so dense it wouldn't like. It so did you eat the cake while crying? I love that visual. <laughs> 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 
this is what happens when you ask food questions anyway. Black button. Whose turn is it? Oh, is that a Tanaka? That is hilarious and awesome. Oh my god! Oh! That's a whole group of Oh, it's a Pluto! Whole group! Yeah, all y'all come up. We're going to tell you how much we love you. We're all Proportionally correct Tanaka is so awesome. Uh, that was some of my most fun is having anytime our Bruce would come in, we would get because oh, in the making of Black Butler, I wanted everybody to have a joke, and when uh, they show Tanaka practicing his lines, ho 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 ho, that was making me laugh because our Bruce would come in and he'd be like. Um, Oh, no, 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 no. We would actually work those ho ho ho's. <laughs> it's really absolutely perfect. <laughs> work them ho ho's. Work them ho ho ho's. Next question. Oh, oh, do we, uh, yes. You with the glasses. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. Um, what's the biggest mistake any of you have made recording that episode? Oh, thank God. I feel like in life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the biggest mistake you've ever made? Like, where are we being here? I'm kidding, it's a joke, I love all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think Ian would be the best one to answer that question since you corrected. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know what our mistakes were. Yes, exactly. Were. So you let us know what our mistakes were. Now that is how you pass the buck. <laughs> uh, I'm really good at that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, what Brain is really not good at is... <laughs> no, um, I'd say the only real difficulty you have is coughing. Coughing? Coughing or sneezing. Which one of them do you have difficulty with? Because I remember doing one scene. Oh, you mean fake, uh, fake sneezing. Fake sneezing. Fake yeah, there you go. Uh, for you, fake sneezing, and for you, not enough thrusting, man. <laughs> what yeah, that was the entirety of the series, just like, hello, my lord. <laughs> is it nice, oh, gray? <laughs> Entire series should have been done that way. Do you sign a contract with me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, no, I, you don't agree. I never screwed up. I don't mess up. I don't make mistakes. You know there is a blooper reel, right? There is a blooper reel. Yeah. I know. What's the, what, what, was the, what was the thing that cracked you up so much that I said when I was being really douchey in the booth that one time? It was on Black Which time? It was the other time. <laughs> Not the one you're thinking of, but the other 800. No, I, it was, it was, she was directing me on, on Black Blood Brothers. Oh, Very hard okay. to say. And I, it was just, I don't know, it was one of my rare moments of... Oh, I remember. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there were, when I was I was directing him, and then uh, you know we did the take, and I said, "Okay, let's get that one more time." It sounded like you had something in your throat, and yeah. he said, "It's called talent." <laughs> <laughs> By the way, not true. I screw up all the time in fabulous ways. I we screw all up. Do. We all yeah. Do. But I just like to be, you know, douchey about it sometimes, because, like, yeah. Brina, you know, we, we, we had that, and I'm like, oh, so it's called talent? I teach a class? 
Um, <laughs> Booth Loopy is the closest you get to booth really like men. Yeah. This dude, after seven hours, oh, you just God. get quiet. Your Booth Loopy is just like. Well, when I'm playing CL, I get quiet. It gets quiet and bitter and resentful. Yeah. Okay, we'll go. Next. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, by the way, I could not compliment her. I'm a very complimentary director. Oh, yeah, you think it's impossible to compliment her. I love Tatum. Oh, that was magic. Oh, we just, oh, that scene's gonna, oh, that's really gonna break some hearts. Oh, you're doing so good. They, like, cry together. And, uh, Brina doesn't have tears. She just sorrow. I don't want her. Anyway, so she, I didn't, I, I tried to do the same thing. She, she would not admit any of that like emotion to me at the time. She was just like, no. Is that true? Because I was like, no, whenever we did that, my favorite scene of the whole freaking show uh, is whenever he gets confronted by his parents and he's like, oh, oh yeah. I've never let go with my hatred. That whole section, I was super emotional and I was sniffing. And your response was, are you really crying? <laughs> she never like showed that to me. And I was like, yes, my character is crying. Therefore, I am crying. I'm an actor. <laughs> he was like, I, just, I mean, that's just cool. That's funny. That was true emotion. That's great. He needs to stop it over the shake wing. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I actually had to get to the point where it's every time I had the drive to compliment her, I'd go, I was amazing there. Like, she'd do a line, she'd be like, oh, yes, I'm, let's go get my revenge. And I, I just have to be like, I am so, so good at directing that that was magic. Which worked out. And that's the, oh, that's, that's when we start having a better, like, yeah. like, oh, okay, like, I, can, I can accept that. And you're like, that was par. Yeah, like standard. Uh, yeah, but I would get like booth loopy. Like I get you know, Sebastian would you know we'd be like six, seven hours in the booth, which is a long time to be standing in a tiny box um, with your only company, this man, um, and the shake wave, and, and the shake wave, and the cane, and the cane, the cane of holding. Um, and I would get booth loopy, and I, I get, I'm goofy enough as it is, I think. But after about four hours in the booth, I'm like. <laughs> What are we doing again? What are we doing? Not exaggerating. Like, and I'd come out of the booth and like hug him between takes if it was like a difficult line. And we're like, oh, I love you. <laughs> Our eight was always laughter. You would just go, ah! <laughs> and slam yourself into the window. <laughs> Yeah, we had to do too. We moved into a uh, into a proper studio, one of the larger ones, where there's a large glass uh, window uh, between you, so they can see everything you're doing. And I would just get loopy and I would start throwing myself at the window, <laughs> smushing his face. And like, oh, ah, ah, ah. and like there was so many prints of my oil. <laughs> All the, 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 the glass has become opaque by the end of season two, and I'm like, oh, that's all me. <laughs> <laughs> we had to turn the lights off, because generally, yeah. yeah, we we have control of that booth, and then you would turn off the lights, and then I remember someone coming in after you and turning on the lights, and a face print. <laughs> Do you remember the day I took my pants off in the booth? I was wearing boxer shorts with skulls on them. I thought it was appropriate, and I just, I thought I'd take my pants off, but he wasn't looking at me while I was, like, just taking my pants off. He's just looking at the preview, like, the preview roll, and I'm like, <laughs> and he would look up and notice, and my pants were off for, like, 30 minutes before he's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, you noticed, oh, thank God. <laughs> Chilly in here. <laughs> you go to the bathroom for like half an hour, but you're like, staying in there. Oh. <laughs> and then I filmed. You should the bathroom in the boxer. Oh, I did. Down the hall. I did. Oh, you mean go to the Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then I fell down trying to put my pants back on. Yeah, I was not like that at all. <laughs> you guys um, had way more fun. I Brina's was like, very professional. all serious and like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was kind of mean. That's the character. I'm just Sorry. character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Whatever no. makes a good product, I don't care. You could throw things at me the entire time. Um, oh, right. Um, in the red no. yeah. thing, yes. Um, what's your favorite superhero? And I have something I want. Can you bring it up and give it to Michael? Uh, what is it? <laughs> if it's poison, no. If it's poison. Do I have to wear it? 
No. Good, you can bring it up. Has it ever breathed? <laughs> like that thing? Oh. That thing that you got? Yeah. That thing that I, we got. I, we got it. I say we got it. I don't want to think it was just for me. It was. It was weird and hairy and pulsating and it ate M&M's. That's all I know. <laughs> Wait, is, is someone said something that had grown into a new life. Like, I don't know what it originally started out being, and we couldn't figure it out because eventually it was just this big green thing. Oh! This is my answer to her question. <laughs> Um, you want to tell about your birthday party? Really, that's uh, you want to tell about your birthday party? I had a Thor themed birthday birthday party. Oh yeah, you're like oh, it you. was crazy. <laughs> like my ego isn't bad enough. They made an Odin's throne for me to sit in. There was hammer yeah. that announced from your near, which I was totally gallery fruit with. I was like. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Broke one of the tiles on my table doing it because I was I would drink and be like another. <laughs> we all had the the, the paper like we had Thor the hats. Thor had there were and, cheese and cubes the... with pretzels stuck in them as in uh, like little hammers. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> like, ah. town. I know. Oh, oh, I'm I'm always happy, always probably happy that you missed it because there was entertainment. <laughs> You would just say he got Thor themed entertainment. Oh, shit. I'm so bored. <laughs> Under 18 panel. Anyway, um, who is your favorite superhero? Batman. I've always been a Batman. Oh, Batman. That's a hard question. Spider Man's in close second. For the record. Um, I'm going to go with Wolverine. I'm going to say. I always did like Venom though, and Captain America. I've loved Captain America since I was a kid. He's everything that's awesome about a grandpa's generation. Good <laughs> man. He wants to fight for justice. You know what? He has a fine point. Of <laughs> Someone, never mind. Anyway, next question. Yo, picky, picky. Oh, okay. You, yeah, go for it. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We love you. We love you. We'll wear them theoretically. You know how long it takes me to do this? My stupid hair? You know how long? This is architectural. This is a magic trick. This is purely theoretical hair. And shh. I'm trying to get out of wearing a hair. can't get back. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't like to wear things anymore because I made the mistake. I have a policy. It's not that I don't love you. Um, it's that I once agreed to wear rabbit ears on a panel, and you can't ever do that. Never do that, ever. Because then every panel you do from then on, you will walk out of it with pearls and heels and wings. And they will just, wear this, wear this, wear this, wear this. I'm like, I feel like a crazy homeless person now. <laughs> I should walk around and be like, hello, do you have $5? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get a grocery card. And put yeah, the grocery stuff card with right? like some weird animal in it. I'm an actor! <laughs> That's gonna be me in my 60s. I'm convinced of this. Somebody's gonna run into me and like, you were Sebastian. Oh, yes, I was that! Like, just wearing a tattered fur coat and like some horrible pimp hat and like shoes with fish aquariums. All of, that, all of this would be you being completely lucid, just making the choice, being like, no, no. I'm wearing a watermelon today. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, so I don't wear things anymore because it starts a very dangerous, dangerous precedent. Yes. So is it my turn to pick? Yeah. Oh god, this side of the room. Uh, you in the red shirt. Yes, you. Yeah. The glasses boy. Yeah. Scotty, I think I call you. Scotty. Okay. So my question is: is obviously there's some sort of power struggle between Ciel and Sebastian. At least that's what I got from it. And how did y'all feel about that power struggle through the progression of the show as you were acting it? I know it kind of struck me, and, you know, it seemed like Sebastian had all this control and then Ciel, you know, backhands on that one time. Sebastian, you had control. control. <laughs> what do you think about that power struggle and who had more or the other in your opinion? Oh, I definitely had more. <laughs> 
I, I would agree, because uh, Sebastian may be extremely powerful and be able to do all sorts of crazy things, but at the end of the day, CL is the one that holds what he wants, which is the soul nom nom. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I think the power struggle is fantastic, because I mean, I think it makes for really, uh, really good drama. It's very juicy, because the relationship between the two of them is so complicated because of it. I felt, uh, when I first started uh, playing Sebastian, I thought it was really fun and challenging and very new for me because Sebastian isn't human. So it's not really fair or proper, I think, to assign human motivations to him. So as an actor, you're like, well, where is this coming from? Because really everything about him that we associate with as human, the, the, you know, the, the, the suave and the sexy and the, and the powerful and all that, um, is just a mask he's wearing. I mean, he's, he's a creature on the hunt, so this is camouflage. What's behind that mask is anybody's guess, because a demon is sort of a force of nature. You know, you can't really, I, I'm sure that, you know, seeing him in his true form, which incidentally we never do, right? for a very good reason, because I think our, I don't think we would see his true form. I think his true form would... True form is Catwoman? <laughs> There you go. You did enjoy it when the heels came out very much. Oh, I loved it. I yeah. loved it. But I still don't think that was his true form. I think that was when that he was decided uh, to show Ash. That just was to be that alive. was. I think he takes on the form of whatever nightmare person he's 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 uh, confronting, and because that's what demons do. So I thought, well, this is you know, he, so the love, you know, the respect, all of that that he had was just part of a power play. It was it was not not fake, but not sincere either. It was somewhere in between. But then season two, I thought the relationship deepened because I felt there was clearly something else where you know they were becoming, uh, they were approaching equal footing. And as that was happening, I think whatever, you know, the mask Sebastian wears, uh, which is Sebastian, uh, and whatever's behind that began to fuse, and so he's now something new, and he owes that to CL. And I think that puts most of the power in that relationship in CL's court. So I, I love it. I think the drama is fantastic. You know, it's a, it's a really fun retelling of the Faust legend, which is, you know, a really cool idea. <laughs> and, uh, curry and cake. <laughs> but that's what I think about that. Well, it's so funny that you bring that up because, like, honestly, and I never thought about it until, until this moment, because I truly never felt the power struggle because I don't think CL ever felt there was a power struggle. I don't think there was ever a moment that CL didn't think he was in charge because he was young and naive. So as a result, I honestly, the way, I mean, that's how I played it. So I never even when, when considered that. When he woke up and the curse was gone, there was a bit. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to tie my shoes! <laughs> That's true. I blocked that out of my memory. <laughs> I, uh, from someone who didn't, you know, have to put myself in those two characters, I think the, the struggle was only right at the beginning when, when CL was just like, oh, I hate you, you're gonna eat me. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, okay, we're on a, we're on a team. We have five minutes, so I like doing speed rounds with really quick questions and really quick answers, so we can get a lot of people in. Right? You guys like that? Uh, Let's do that. Quick questions, quick answers. Me? Huh? Okay, cool. Um, yes? The accent. <laughs> uh, the darkness and never letting go of hatred. He was a chef. <laughs> <laughs> Um, green hair. Favorite color? Green. Uh, purple. Woo! <laughs> really? Good for me. I like purple. <laughs> go with blue. Um, hand in the back. What's your favorite anime to walk on and to watch personally? Favorite anime to work on and watch. I love Summer Wars and I love watching Helsing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I love, oh, she said Summer Wars. I'm not going to go with that because I don't want to. Uh, I love Bacchano. And I love Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Black Butler and Toriko. I love Toriko. Thank you. Yes, with that. Um, are you, is there going to be like a season three or anything? We have no Ask idea. Ask Japan. No Ask Japan. <laughs> England in the back. I can't see that well. Hi, America. Um, so, for, uh, fans of the future, the competition would be, uh, Sebastian and France. Quick, competition, Sebastian and France, two lines each. Uh, 
Oh my god, you're so sexy. Do you want to come work for me? No. <laughs> Good movie. Favorite scene from Black Butler? None. <laughs> the scene where he gets confronted by his parents. Uh, oh, and then when he tells them uh, to kill, um, 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 Pluto? Yes. Uh, the making of Black Butler 2, that OEA. Yeah. <laughs> that was so much fun. Um, I'm going to go from this side of the room. I'm going to go see it. You did, you did. Um, Happy birthday, my it's dear. It's your birthday, my dear. You live to buy one more year. This special day you turn sexy. Right. <laughs> and you live out your dreams. There you go. Happy birthday, Mom. You had to do that. I had to write that song. I actually did write that song because uh, Happy Birthday is copyrighted. You have to pay. Yeah, that's why you don't hear it on too many uh, TV things. Yes, ma'am. Israeli. <laughs> it's, true. it's my favorite accent to hear in the world. I love Israel. I can't do it, but I love that voice, that, that accent for some reason. Uh, I just went to Ecuador and I really like their accents. Nice. I'm, I'm in a German phase right now, especially Woo! Werner Herzog's. I have no idea, I don't know why, but I love doing Werner Herzog's voice. It just gives me pleasure. I don't know why. I am holding it. I, I'm really annoyed when I go to like German food restaurants because I'm like, yes, I would like some schnitzel with that. That's very good. Uh, anyway, uh, I think we've got one more minute, so quickly, go! Sebastian Clyde and Hannah's relationship. It's very healthy. Hot. <laughs> you. but I think it's the funniest, and it's Black Butler uh, relevant, and I have to drop the F-bomb for effect, so just bear with me. Um, I was at a convention, a huge, huge convention, uh, where we were, we were there to actually support the premiere of Italia, um, which was nerve-wracking, because we thought, oh, this is amazing, it's like a 30,000-strong convention, if they hate it, we're all dead. <laughs> and then that same weekend, they, and I got a call from the brand manager on Black Butler, like, oh, by the way, they announced you as Sebastian, I'm like, oh, you killed me, why, why? You know, if they hate the idea, I'm like, I'm going to die the Italian way or the Black Butler way this weekend. I have no idea how I'm going to survive. And, uh, but everyone was really supportive about it. In my uh, autograph signing session, the very last one I had, this little girl came through. She was very tiny. She's probably about 10 years old. And she had her mom with her. And uh, the whole time she comes up with a Black Butler wall scroll. And she hands me this paint pen. And she wants me to sign her name. And she has this very specific list of instructions of what she wants written and all this. And while I'm doing it, you know, because I want it to be special. It's the first wall scroll I'm signing associated with the show. Um, she's just talking away in this tiny, adorable little voice going, Oh my god, Black Butler's like my favorite thing in the entire world. And I'm so happy. I knew you'd get it. I knew you'd be Sebastian because you're like perfect for it. And you're my favorite actor in the world. And, and Black Butler's my favorite show in the world. And you're my favorite actor in the world. And Sebastian's my favorite character. And because you're my favorite voice actor and it's my favorite show, I think it's amazing and it's you better not fuck it up. <laughs> I look up at her and her mother. The best part is her mother just standing there behind her going. Okay, here we go. Can I come with you? We're going to do this tomorrow. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Oh, anybody want to talk to Twitter or anything? No? I'm a J. Michael Tatum, but, or whatever the tweet thing is. It's just at. Is it just at? Yeah, at. See, I don't know what I'm doing online. I'm at Rita Valencia. I'm at Ian Tweeting. 
Or you can do the Facebook page, Facebook slash Ian's Voice. I would get killed if I didn't do this. I'd get the, did you plug it? <laughs> oh, and there's a one o'clock signing. There's a one o'clock autograph signing session. Where? In main event, one o'clock signing. Get your stuff signed by Jay. <laughs> <laughs>